Meghan Markle is in some serious legal jeopardy facing a defamation case by her own sister, Samantha Markle. We have Samantha's attorney, Peter Tickton here. This is The Interview. Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I'm Andy Signor. So excited for this new series, The Interviewer. We have the interview of important people, and I'm so honored to have Peter Tickton here. Welcome to the show, sir. Well, thank you for having me here. This is this is great. I've, popcorn is one of the things I watch. Well, I, I thank you. That's an honor to hear from you, sir. I know you've done a lot of important cases. You know a lot of important people, and I'm so glad that you are taking on this case for Samantha. And I wanted to bring you on the show, and so thank you for doing this, because I was there in the courtroom as you were uh, facing the judge regarding this of whether this case will continue. And obviously we are still waiting on the judge's verdict, but I got I'll be honest. I, I said this to you as we spoke afterwards, I was worried because I know these defamation cases are hard and I went in, you know, a little skeptical, but I heard you in that courtroom and I was just blown away by what you were presenting. And I thought, you know what? The audience needs to hear this. So I'm, I'm glad you're here with your permission. I'd like to go through some of these statements that Megan has said in these clips. And I'd love for you to give some of that passion and, and, and facts behind why Samantha was defamed. Are you ready for that? Sure. I love it. All right. I, I, I want to get into it because I know overall, I mean, I guess give us your overall spiel here. Like what's the main fight here in your mind that Samantha has a good shot of winning? Of all the different things that she said, well, it's it's well, more just overall like it's her, Megan. You feel lied and and defamed her in these Oprah and Netflix interviews. That's that's where you're primarily focusing, correct? Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, Samantha's book had come out, and I, I'm sure that uh, the the Duchess had never read her book because it really wasn't even defamatory, or it wasn't uh, you know denigrating her. It didn't hurt her. Uh, but the, the fact is that uh, just knowing that that book was out there, it was important to Meghan Markle. To... Yeah, and that's a big point we're going to get to because Samantha was promoting this book uh, and it, it was clear Meghan didn't want this book out there or getting any headway. Let's start with the Oprah interview because interview, I... Um, this is a, a sort of an integral part where it, Samantha is officially brought up. Samantha Markle, your half-sister on your father's side, mm -hmm. has written a, a supposedly tell-all book mm -hmm. about you. What is, what is your relationship with her? I think it'd be very hard to tell all when you don't know me. Um, and I, <laughs> I mean, it's, this is a very different situation than my dad, right? When you talk about betrayal, betrayal comes from someone that you have a relationship with, right? I, I don't feel comfortable talking about people that I really don't know, but... Um, but I will. <laughs> I grew up as an only child, which everyone who grew up around me knows. And I wished I had siblings. I would have loved to have had siblings. That's why I'm so excited to be pregnant, so that Archie has someone. It was really interesting to, I mean, the last time I saw her must have been at least 18, 19 years ago. And before that, 10 years before that. Um, so you all weren't close. You didn't grow up together. No. She doesn't no. really know you. No, she changed her last name back to Markle in, I think she was in her early 50s at that time, only when I started dating Harry. Hmm. So I think that says enough. Says enough. All right, well, there's a lot to unpack there, Peter, obviously. Oh, uh, there? I, you can't one, believe a one word. One thing you blew my mind is you explain, let's start with that name change because it blew Oprah's mind. And as I watched it, I'll admit, this made Samantha look crazy, right? And so tell us the truth about this. What was the truth about the name change? Okay, all right. First first of all, do you notice, and you might want to just play that last part just again, because I, I think you got to look for this one thing that's in there, the word only. Only when I started dating Harry, because that that's a key word for what was said. Okay. Know you? No, she changed her last name back to Markle. In I think she was in her early fifties at that time. Only when I started dating Harry. Only, only when she did it, Harry. Right, and and it's funny because uh, her lawyers in representing the different quotations, they made a nice chart for all the quotes but they left out the word only, okay? And and that's important because it changes the whole meaning of it. She would have said she changed her name when I started dating Harry. Well, you know, then you could see that maybe in this use, she, she used the name Markle, 
where she see the thing is she went back and forth okay so she used her married name when she was dealing with her children because that's their name so you know but but she's always used her maiden name of markle she she years before this when she graduated from from school uh she changed her name so uh she used the name on her diploma of markle uh you know throughout so you could say she went back and forth but only when she was dealing with matters that could affect her children did she use her married name or you know after her divorce so again, uh, false. We we can debunk. You're saying that's not true. She didn't only de change the name. Then she had changed her name a few times and had nothing to do with Prince Harry. Right, but if you just look at that all by itself, and this is the the, the defense and what they want us to do. They want us to take each statement all by itself and attribute either meaning to it or no meaning or harm to it or no harm. So how does that hurt someone? So if I if I were to say that uh, that I had a sister and she used her name uh, and she changed it back to her maiden name only when uh, you know I started dating uh, whoever, uh, how is that harmful? How does that demean her? How does it how does it make Samantha Markle look like a bad person? Because, you know, the fact is, even if you say something false, it, if it, if it, you know, if you were to say uh, to some about some creep that he's a wonderful person, how does that hurt? So the way that this hurts is because it was all part of the plan to get the public to believe that Samantha Markle had no knowledge of her sister, Megan. So that, I mean, why would anybody buy a book? from somebody that doesn't even know the person and is cashing in on this as uh, uh, as a fake, you know? Yeah. Well, you trust know. me, the irony of Meghan Markle attempting to call someone a grifter is not lost on me. <laughs> <laughs> trust me. But it's it, more interesting because you're right. It's a whole thing that's setting up this credibility of Samantha. And let's now we'll go back further. She was an only child, false. Uh, and she uh, n never saw her. I was impressed in the courtroom because I didn't know this. Apparently, Samantha lived next door at one point or something, right? There was, there's yeah. there's ample proof that that's a lie. There was many intergra interactions between the two of them throughout her adult life. No, it, it was it was. A little, I, I misspoke when I said lived next door. I did say that in court because that's what my understanding was. But when I was given that information, that was an interpretation. She was more like ten minutes away. Okay, close. Okay. But but she was close. They're back and forth. She's driving her to school through, you know, until she had her own license. You know, she's she's, uh, you know, what can I tell you? This is her sister. Yeah, seventeen years older, you know, or significantly older. So she she she, or is it thirteen years? I'm sorry, older. So you know, so she's she's in a position of, you know, she's already a teenager when she's holding the baby. Uh, but we have pictures throughout the childhood where Samantha is present and there and, and knew her. Which debunks this idea that they only met twice is how Megan sort of plays it. We met in passing twice is really how I, as a third party who watches this, I had nothing to do with her. She was never in my life. I know 19 years ago and 10 years before that, it, it, it's nonsense. And they still maintained a telephone re relationship right until the time that they had their 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 separation, you know, from the time that that Megan came down on on some. Well, and we're gonna get there, but Megan also got close to her daughter later on, which is very odd, given why why what was the severe interest then? If so, we'll get to that. There's a lot here. Anything else you want to unpack though from yeah. this specific segment of Oprah? Not really, but you did mention, you know, Ashley basically that she got close to Ashley, but then she dumped her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to get there. I got that next. Yeah, I want to yeah, go yeah. to the next clip here right. from the Netflix documentary, which will which will uh, lead us into that. But here's now. So after Oprah, she says this stuff about Samantha, which maybe would have been bad enough. But now she continues to pile the UK on. UK media, I truly believe, wanted my mom's side of my family to be. This the is a bigger narrative she's been doing, painting her mom as the classy right one and the Markles as the disgusting grifters. Ones that all this drama could be stirred up with. And suddenly you just have my mom who's classy and quiet and there. And then you have the other side of my family that is just acting differently. My half-sister, who I hadn't seen for over a decade, and that was only for a day and a half, 
Suddenly, it felt like she was everywhere. I don't know your middle name. I don't know your birthday. You're telling these people that you raised me and you've coined me Princess Pushy? Thoughts so far. I mean, because it's interesting. She, again, and Oprah says, I don't like to talk about people I don't know. But now Megan's choosing to once again, without even being asked, she produced this documentary. Now, again, present more against Samantha. Yeah, she's not the one that came up with the name Princess Pushy. Uh, that was that was the press that did that. And Samantha wrote her book about the sister of, of, of Princess Pushy basically to kind of almost ridicule the fact that they make these names for people. So it, it wasn't that she coined that name. That's another false statement that she made. But, but again, uh, no, good to know. But she also is, why is she continuing to talk about and defame her sister if she doesn't know her? It's very strange. It does feel like she's trying to get an agenda out. Here, here's further from that piece. Let's get away and read her book. Yeah, exactly. It, it discredit, discredit her so that people don't want to read Samantha's book. That's 17 years older than her. And Megan, I left when she was two. I don't remember. This is weird. Megan and I left when I was two, but I, I know that's, she, we have so much footage of Samantha, I mean, sorry, with Megan, with her father. I want to talk about that relationship too, because I know you know that. So we'll come back to that. But it's it's odd how they're painting this. Oh, her father, her father's kids were never in the picture, which I know that's false. Or seeing her when I was a kid at my dad's house, if and when they would come around. And then the, the last time that I saw her that I remember is when I was in my early 20s. I hadn't had her fall out with her. We didn't have a closeness to be able to have that. And I wanted a sister. So again, anything to add there as I'm sort of stopping these segments? It's just, it's, you know, when you know the truth and you watch this woman, you know, and I wanted a sister. I mean, she's just making that up. You know, I mean, it's not like she's going into her memory banks and thinking about how there was an occasion where she was asked, did you want a sister? Or I mean, who... Who in the world is, I mean, was there a time when she was a child that she was itching for a sister? I mean, it just doesn't even make any sense. She'll just say anything. It feels very performative. I'll say that. And all the stuff she's doing, there's a lot of uh, acting, it feels, and rea overly emotional looking and, rea you know, it's it's very performative. Yeah, it, it It is. And, and, it, and it's nonsense. It's all the drive to point home that she didn't actually have a sister. But, you know, when, you know, if she wanted a sister, when did she want that sister? Uh, who did she mention it to? Why does she have a memory of that? It isn't a memory. It's just, it's just fiction. She's making it up and, 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 as, as she does almost everything. Absolutely. And now here's where things get it, take an interesting turn. And now some, uh, Samantha's own daughter is brought in who now suddenly Megan wants a relationship with. I just remember my dad saying to me, Samantha found her, her daughter. Which that uh, that's very telling. So you do know her. You know what you're keeping in track of her. You're following through through relatives. You found this out, and now and like, oh, if you have her email address, I want to email her. With I, Peter, I'm just gonna say my own. If I'm not close to my sister, I'm probably not gonna have an interest being close to her kids. It's just a weird thing. Like why would I want to be so close and involved? in my estranged sister's kids, right? It's, it's very telling to me, but here she is, now Samantha's sister getting involved. You know, these like long emails back and forth to each other, and then texts and calls. Uh, here's Megan saying, oh, how I love Ashley, painting her as like her best friend now. I wanted a sister, and she was like a little sister. Ash was put through quite a bit by the media, just by association. I didn't want, I didn't want her life to be plagued with all that drama. After the news first broke, Samantha pretty quickly began expressing a lot of angry words about Meg towards me. What was communicated to me was maybe some resentment. And it, it felt like no matter what I said, you know, her perspective didn't change and seemed to get angrier and bigger. And we stopped talking. You know, some people you just can't reason with. Now, I, this really bought, when I watched it, it's like, wow, Samantha's a monster, blow, you know, on our, on our kids and all this stuff. And, oh, Megan coming in to save the day. But, Peter, what I want your reactions because, as you said earlier, Megan ended up dumping Ashley as well, no? As far as we know, I mean, you know, I, 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 I can't say. I haven't been in touch with Ashley. We, we, we haven't uh, sought her deposition at this point. And we, we, you know, what I see is somebody who got a little bit starstruck by her own aunt, and, you know, 
got the bragging rights and was looking forward to going to to a royal wedding. I mean, you know, this is this is quite an advance for her. And I, I, I think that, you know, when people get that way, sometimes they they only see what they want to see. You know, there's none so blind as he who will not see. Maybe now that she's been discarded by Megan. I mean, you know, this is one of the things that I've found through my career uh, about sociopaths and uh, is that they, once they reject somebody, they never, ever take them back again. They, uh, you know, sociopaths understand to some extent what they are because they have to fake everything. When, when you have no empathy, you can't go around through life uh, when somebody that you're associated with or dealing with and their father died, you've got no empathy for this person at all. No sympathy, no empathy, no nothing. But you can't go through life acting like you've got no empathy. You've got to pretend. So you draw upon when somebody came to you when you had a loss and they said, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. So they know how to act because they study that. That's why so many of them are actors. Uh, but you know, the, so, so you've got Meghan Markle who basically captured the mind of her niece, uh, probably calculated for some purpose, but when she didn't need her anymore, she's gone. Oh, I, I, I mean, I, I'm with you a hundred percent. I'm, I'm, and thank you for being honest with us about your feelings on this, but I, I was going to ask, do you feel like there was a manipulation potentially on Megan's part? She keeps claiming that there's no relationship with Samantha, but clearly was there some sort of vendetta or feeling or I'm going to go after your daughter next? Do you think that could have been a possibility? I don't think she necessarily knows where she's going with everyone that she's doing. I'm, you know, look, if a big part of your brain is always into acting and putting, you know, coming out with the the normal way that people re would react, which isn't you, so you got to figure it out. And you're thinking about it. I mean, anybody who's ever been distracted by bad news of some sort or by by other thoughts knows that you're not quite as smart as you would be if you could apply that part of the brain to the, the, the things at hand. But if that part of your brain is always an analyzing what's going on so that you don't get found out or caught uh, as being somebody that has this problem of having no no uh no empathy uh Fact. i mean yeah you know, it, if you think about her and everything you watch and everything you do i mean her the fact that that she's got the sussex squad and what they do to people i mean don't forget it's not as though we just have a sister here who uh d d defamed a, a sister it's not as though that's you know she said something bad and there's no consequences once that Sussex squad gets into the works, once people like Boozy get into the works with their bots, their their automated bot systems, where where all the stuff goes out and fills the social media, it destroys a person's life. So, well, you know, and I want to get to Boozy. I, in fact, we've been this has been so fascinating. I want to break this down and I want to spread these out so we can make sure these videos get more digestible and more shared. We're gonna. I want. I want to get into the next part with Boozy next, but I, this is an integral part of this case because. Boozy literally says that Samantha Markle is part of this hate group online and the way that this clip and everything paints it, it is incredibly nefarious and paints Samantha as a terrorist. I want to break this down. It's going to be in part two of our interview with uh, Peter Tickton. So stay tuned. I'll drop this one tomorrow. I'm spraying this out just so we can make sure these stand around and so we can get more attention on all of this together rather than one long video, which I know gets lost in the shuffle. So Peter, with your permission, stick around. We're going to do one more video about Boozy next up. Stay tuned, guys. You're not going to miss this one, but I think already you're seeing how Peter's got a case here. Peter, I got your back. I know a lot of the fans do. Any <laughs> final things before we go to part two you want to mention? No, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here to answer whatever, whatever you want to ask about. I love it. He's not afraid. Let's do it. Stay tuned. Make sure if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for alerts, smash the like button, and stay tuned. We'll have more with Peter Tickton here on Popcorn Planet.